Hello everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome to my corner of gem cutting. So recently I've been asked by a client to recreate a stone that I've cut in this bicolor lab sapphire material. The cut that I will be recreating is the Radiant Eye of Zol. It is a design by Arya Akhavan. I'll be cutting the piece to 10 by 8, a little bigger than the one that I had previously done. But what's interesting about this piece I'll be recreating is that the pink color is only actually on one side of the stone but the way that the light reflects through the stone makes it appear as if it's also on the other side. When I go to the dop it I'll need to position it so the the pink color is just a little bit off center to one side. Now before I can get going on this piece I need to take this uh, about half bowl I have left of this bicolor sapphire material over to my trim saw and cut out the piece that I have marked for doing this cut. On this piece I'll be making two cuts. The first one will be along this line here after which I will rotate it and I'll cut it along this line which will give me two similarly sized pieces one will become the stone that I'm cutting, the other one will be saved for cutting to something later. Well, I like using this attachment to hold the stone in place so that I don't have to have my fingers so close to the blade while I'm cutting. So I place that here in this attachment, get it aligned with the marks I made on the stone for cutting. Once those are aligned where I want them, I could turn it on and trim the piece. There the first cut is made, so now I'll get it rotated and get a second cut made. There, now we have the piece that will become our faceted stone and an extra piece that we can save for later. Now before I go to dop this piece that I have, I'm going to go ahead and grind it a little bit to give it a slight preform, shave off a little bit of the material that I don't need. So now that I have this piece slightly ground down and knocked off the rough edges, I'm going to go ahead and measure it out and place a center point for where I want to orient the stone and put in some corresponding uh, alignment marks for dopping. I've aligned the marks just off center of the color zoning just so that it'll be similar to the stone I've already cut. Um, once it's finished this red over on the left side should uh, also appear over in the right side of the piece. I've also put corresponding marks on my dop stick for aligning the stone while dopping. So I'll place a drop of liquid super glue onto the surface where I'll be dopping my stone to and then I'll take my dop and I'll line it up and attach it to the stone by pressing firmly to the stone and just waiting a few seconds for it just to have a slight bond to where I can now release my hand from the stone and it will stay secure. I'll add just a little extra super glue around the edge since this is a bigger stone. Probably a little more than needed. Better safe than sorry. And now I'll let that sit until tomorrow, till it's sat up for probably at least 12 hours. I mean super glue says you're supposed to let it uh, set up for 24 but I usually have no issues if I just let it sit overnight uh, and then I could start cutting on this in the morning. Now that the glue has had all night to set up, we're ready to get started on the pavilion side of this stone. I will start by using my 180 diamond grit topper lap to rough in the stone down to general size before switching over to a finer grit. I will do this by cutting in the P1 facets until they come to a general center point and then 
I will roughen the girdle to within about a half millimeter of the size I want to cut the stone to, which in this case will be 10 by 8 millimeters. So now that we have the stone roughed in with the heavy grit, I'm going to switch to my 600 grit topper lap for doing all the main cutting of the stone, and I'll go through and cut all the tiers. I'll start back with the uh, P1 pavilion facets where I will choose uh, four of the facets to cut in and create a center point. And once I get that cut in perfect, all the rest of my P1 facets will meet up at that center point and everything else on the stone will be based off of that. So I'll go in and I'll cut that, the P1 facets, and then cut in my girdle facets down to the size I want with the 600 grit, getting it right to about 10 by 8 millimeters on its size. And you'll see that after I cut in the girdle facets, it's not quite level when compared to the P1 pavilion facets. But that gets leveled out when I cut in the uh, second and third tier of the pavilion facets. When I cut those in, they will make a level girdle. And once that's done, I'll go in and I'll cut the last tier of the pavilion facets, which are just some um, small facets. With that, the stone is now cut to size with all the pavilion facets cut in. So now I'll be switching over to my uh, bat lap, which is a tin alloy lap, which is charged with a 3000 grit diamond uh, paste for going and doing the pre-polish. So I'll work my way back through the tiers, hitting each of them with the 3000 grit, working my way back all the way to the girdle to get them all ready for polishing. With the pre-polish complete, I've switched out to my other bat lap, which is charged with a 60,000 grit diamond paste. And with that, I will be going back through each of the pavilion facets one more time to give them a nice final polish. The pavilion side of the stone is now completed. So I've picked out a cone dop for the transfer, which I've placed here in my transfer jig. I place the stone I'm working on to be transferred in, and I'll place just a little super glue into that cone dop and slide it together. Now I'll wait for this glue to set up, let it sit till tomorrow, at which I'll be ready to do the crown side. All right, the stone has now sat since yesterday and it's now ready for the crown side to be cut. But first I need to remove the uh, original dop stick. To do that, I will wet a few pieces of paper towel to wrap the stone in along with the coned dop stick, which it's been transferred to to keep it cool while I heat off the original side. I get out my alcohol lamp. And I'll use this to apply heat to the original dop stick until it um, weakens the bond and it separates from the stone. There we go. The wet paper towel keeps the stone cool, keeps too much heat from transferring and weaken, weakening the bond to the new dop stick. And now that the original dop stick is off and it's successfully transferred, I'm ready to cut the crown, which has a lot of depth on this uh, stone, this lab material. So I'm going to be starting with my 360 diamond grit topper lap to knock down a little material and get it a little uh, cut in a little closer to I want to start with the 600 grit. And I, as I use the heavy grit, I'll just be roughing in the first and second uh, tiers of the crown facet. Now that the excess material has been taken off, I have switched out to my 600 grit lap, and I'll be cutting in the first and second tier of the crown facet, which are the break facets or the facets along the girdle edge, and I'll cut them in uh, until I hit the girdle thickness that I want. I'll then go in and cut the third and fourth tier facets on the crown of this stone, which are the main facets, and they meet 
at the girdle. And after the main facets are cut in, I go and cut the fifth here, which is the star facets on this design. The crown facets are now all cut in with the 600 grit. So just like I, what I did with the pavilion, I'll run back through them all now with the 3000 grit for the pre-polish and then hit them all again with the 60,000 grit for final polish. And here the stone is all polished up. It is now ready for the crown to be cut in. So I've removed the stone uh, from the quill and I will put it into my 45 degree table adapter for cutting the table. And I'll run back through the cutting sequence for cutting the table. I'll cut, cut it in close with the 600 grit and the 3000 grit for pre-polish and finish it up with the 60,000 grit. And with the crown cut in, we are now finished with the cutting of the stone. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the acetone to dissolve the super glue and detach it from the dot stick. And we'll see it when it comes out. All right, the piece is now done soaking off. So let's take it out and clean it off and see what it looks like. All right, so here we have the finished stone. It is fairly close to the one I was trying to replicate. It might not be exactly the same with the coloring. I cut to 9.97 by 8.0 millimeters and the piece is 3.19 carats. This stone turned out absolutely beautiful. It is very brilliant and I really love the bicolor and the light play that happens in the stone casting that pink from the one side to the other is just amazing. Anyway, I hope you have liked watching this video. Please hit that like button and feel free to come back and see more of the amazing gemstones that I will be cutting. Thank you.